Dania now. It's Grand Dania. With the gold like this year. Oh my god. It's Grand Dania. And our mom, Shazzy Dania. She's really crazy. It's all true. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shazzy Dania. Damn. It's good to be back. Go oh, yes it is. I forget what to do. <laughs> it's right. been so long, I've forgotten what season it is. It's season 47. Yeah, I don't know. What season? Season seven, guys, I'm pretty sure. That's season seven. That sounds like we've been going for seven years. But we ain't. I oh, know. But it's been good fun, but it's good to be back. Um, we've just figured out how to, uh, all the important issues, where we put our chairs, uh, how we hold a microphone. Um, the fact that we, as adults over the Christmas period, haven't sat next to each other for the entire time. So this is unusual because we've had Christmas with all the family here. I don't think I've sat down. New, we've had New Year's. We've had Australia Day. <sighs> Welcome the back. busy man. time of the year. Is it new season, new voice too, GD? <laughs> what do you mean, brother? <laughs> you sound husky. You sound deep. You sound sexy, mate. Oh, yeah. mate, maybe that moustache on your face is just filtering me through a little bit differently and you're hearing me different in your ear holes because you are looking sexy, my man. I Look appreciate that, it. Bad boy. What's going on? Yeah, so I think true. between the last season and now, it's been sort of shaven maybe three or four times and it's just coming back thicker and denser and juicier. And this is all natural for those watching right now. And down around the corners of your mouth too. Mm, yeah, I'm going to twirl it like we suggested a couple of episodes ago and yeah. it make it look really seedy. Like a World War One, you know, pi- fighter pilot. Yeah. Bringing no, it back. We saw you, though, like in between Christmas and New Year, and I don't remember it being there then. That wasn't that No, though. you definitely saw it on the day I shaved it. All right. You know what? And that does work. If you wanted to start growing something and become a man officially, yeah, you're right. You need to get in there and you need to raise that bad boy down regularly just to thicken up those follicles. And I know this because I did to my sister <laughs> when she was about five and uh, she had a little patch of just like, you know, tiny little sort of golden blonde you know, mm. hairs on her arm. And I found uh, an electric razor um, and, I, and I shaved those, those hairs and you should see them now. Um, wow. she, she could plait them. Um, they are long, they are flowing, you know, <laughs> you've, you've ever seen like, you know, have you ever seen someone who has like a mole that has like really just, you know, just really long three strands yes. hanging out of that mole. <laughs> That's what it looks like on her arm after I shaved them, you know, as a, as a little how kid. Do you, how do you go up to your sister and, and talk her into allowing you to use an electric razor at what age? Well, I found it in my toy box. I don't know why there was an electric, you know, shaver in my toy box. Concerning. Hey, hey, let's see if this thing works. Come over here, Courtney. So you knew what it was? Yeah. And I plugged it in. I said, let's see if it works. And I said, I don't want to use it on me. Let me do it on you. (laughs) Shaved her arms. And now she has the longest arm hair in just this one spot that I shaved, just sort of below the elbow. Uh, Well, when I was... Nine or ten. I remember I found a razor sitting on the edge of the bath. Well, this is what I remember. And when I was sitting in the bath, just, you know, singing along and having a bath, I decided to use it. And so I shaved my whole body. Have I ever told right. you? Right. What? Yeah. So I shaved my whole body and then I shaved. Like your head as well? Well, no, except for my head. But I shaved my eyebrows off and I shaved <laughs> all my face. And I shave that makes sense. my you arms. You have no eyebrows. Yeah. You have tattooed on eyebrows. Is yeah, it because you goes, shaved them as a kid? Well, I'm just thinking that goes against your, because everybody said to me, oh, no, what have you done when I came out? And I was like, do you like my, you know, my new look? And mum and dad were like, oh, no, she's going to get a monobrow because that's what happens. It grows back thick. Yeah. But it n- never did. No. Yeah, the opposite. You went alopecia-ish. Yeah, but the same with my arms and legs and the only thing that uh, is hairy is my stomach. Glad you said stomach. <laughs> um, excellent. Because and, Wait, so you're saying you've got a hairier heart. stomach and a hairier, do you have a hairy chest? I don't even have any hairs on my chest or stomach. Like you, you're doing better than me. Hey, bro, my wife has a hairier tummy, tummy than you. Yeah. That, that's, I've never heard a sexier sentence in my life. <laughs> I'm a bit upset. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a, um, a fine fur, I like to call it. And it really only started when I was pregnant. 
Do you remember? You know, like you know, like a seal in the Arctic. Like you know, they protect like, themselves yeah. from the icebergs. It's kind of like that. Yeah, and maybe there's some <laughs> physiological reason why one would have to grow a hairy stomach. But <laughs> what are you laughing at? This is legit. You know, it's legit. You know, what's good is when she eats chips in bed that she has this natural thing where all the chip fibers kind of just get caught in her stomach hair. So then they don't fall in the bed, which is great. So then she can just sort of stand up, then go into the shower and just sort of brush all the all the chip pieces off off her stomach hair into the shower, and then we don't have like a crunchy bed. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like a shark net. net. It's a great invention, exactly. Or I could just use my mummy tummy and flick it back up into my mouth. Yeah, yeah. Like now, yeah. second go at those <laughs> chips that you dropped the first time round. Yeah, oh. I'm not quite sure how we got to this. Point, this but is turning me off. The other thing is, I've got one hairy toe. <laughs> mm, yep. So, explain that. I can't. But um, you know, don't you? I've seen you one. shave your toes. Yeah, I've shaved the other toe so it matches oh, so it with matches. those. Yeah. And that was actually that was a, that was a bit of a breakthrough anyway, moment in our relationship when I looked down. Hairy toe on the yeah. right, and the left has no hair. I'm sure, he's shaving your toes, and I was like, well, I don't know, I don't know if this relationship's for me. Just quietly, um, I think this is an opportunity to get those toe picks onto some kind of site and make extra money through the podcast shares. Oh, yeah, I wonder if um, hairy oh. female toes fetch higher dollars. You know, on those foot fetish websites. Dude, I find it very hard to believe, but I am happy to take a photo of my foot. And I guess only the people who listen to the podcast will know what it's about. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put it, put a photo of my foot up on Facebook mm. and Instagram and say, you know, get around something this. like that. Get around. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know. If you, if yeah. I Y K N K, you toe, you toe. If you toe, you toe. That's what I wanted, something smart like that. You know yeah. what it does explain? Why every time I get into the shower to shave, you know, and I lacerate my throat <laughs> and I nearly bleed to death um, is because my razor clearly is being used for a lot of other purposes of which I'm not aware. I didn't and it's realize. it's blunt as hell. I didn't realize that we had to have separate razors. What the freaking hell are you talking about? Yeah. Why do you think girls' razors are pink and boys are whatever colour the boys' one is, right? Because it's to keep us separate. So you don't, you know. You've got, Look at you've George's got, face. He doesn't even know that. You've well, got well, not surface area, right? You're, you're, you've are you're got two legs that at least you're shaving in your stomach if you get round to it in your toes. <laughs> yeah. And then I've only got like this. I've only got like, I don't know, 10 cubic centimetres on my face that I need to do. So why am I going to shave my face, which is a precious part of what I do. Mind you, my face is the moneymaker. You know, when you're a TV guy, you got to be pretty careful. I don't want like permanent scars and stuff from using a blunt razor. You know what I mean? No. But even hygienically, mm. they have two separate razors. I feel like I wouldn't want to go. You know, using a, a razor my mum was using. No, uh, are no. you saying that I'm Grant's mum? Mm, no. Many, well, you know, <laughs> many have said it before. We've said this before. Where we post pictures together and people write in the comment section, oh, oh no, it's usually a news story, isn't it? It's not me when we're in a magazine or, or on the newspaper, but you go to the comment section and people write, isn't it great that Grant's taken his mum out? Oh, how does that actually make you feel? Uh, oh, I, I don't think I read it as much anymore, but uh, oh, when, I remember when I was really heavily pregnant do you remember that? And I, I had braces and I wasn't sleeping properly. It was I was pregnant with Scout and I was enormous and I couldn't breathe properly because I had, um, I was going to say emphysema. It wasn't emphysema. It was not. Was the, 85. <laughs> the asthma. You know, what was that? <laughs> pneumonia. I had pneumonia. Like, so I was in all sorts, feeling really, really crap. And I had to go to a performance um, for Sailor and it was a two-hour dance performance and it was hot. I was having the baby the next week feeling really ordinary and I hope I've painted enough of a picture of how ordinary I was feeling. And we walked out of the concert thing and... And there was a photographer there that we I we didn't even see and took, hiding across the road and took photos and Grant you know was looking all happy and sprightly because he's just enjoyed a two hour show of um you know of Sailor I was looking like a hot mess like I was looking like Stifler's mum had <laughs> I don't even know where I, how to explain it but I was like a wreck and I felt like a 
I'd swallowed a balloon. Like even my toes were so swollen. I couldn't even do up my boots. Like my my boots were, the, the zippers were left open. Like I looked horrendous. And it, those photos came out in an article and and people, well, you know, those trolls, they went to town and somebody sent me a screenshot of it and uh, that really upset me. I remember sitting in the mm. car crying and Grant's like, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. I was like <laughs> eating a Mars bar. <laughs> it is so unfair. People are so cruel. They don't understand it. And then somebody even commented and said, oh, you know, she didn't even brush the back of her hair. And I remember yeah. I was like, and it looks like I didn't brush the back of my hair. <laughs> And the comments really hurt at that yeah. point. When you're feeling fine, those sort of things don't bother you. But if you're having a bit of a dip and a bit of a, a you know, a bit of a low, yeah, those those narky comments. Yeah, and so you know, can, I, can hurt. And you know, being told that you look like you know your husband's mum doesn't, you know, it, that's I don't know. That's some mean shit, is what that is. <laughs> So whoever I, keeps writing that, <laughs> fuck you. You know what? Keep writing it because I don't even look at it anymore. Yeah. Um, and I'm proud of being married to Jennifer Coolidge anyway. That is not a sorry. Um, she is really cool. And you know what? Like I really, I really dig her. Her speech at So Jennifer Coolidge is, for those who don't know, is actually Stifler's mum from the original America's Pie, American Pie movie. Yeah. She's like now in the White Lotus. She's just she's just won like her first was it an Emmy I think she might have just won recently I think so her speech how she like that is gold when she got up and she said you know I have all these neighbors and they've never invited me to parties but but you know but now they are and thank you like I just <laughs> thought that was just so awesome and she's not typical Hollywood which I love no. and the other person that I love from Hollywood too is Melissa McCarthy oh uh, um, yeah. Yeah, I watch her movie, well, I used to, uh, on the plane and Grant used to tell me to be quiet because I'd be laughing so loud. You go, with darling, headphones you, on. your headphones on and you're snotting out your nose and everyone can look, is looking at you. I just find everything she does hilarious. You take a sip of red wine and then just spray it across the seat in front of you if you're watching, <laughs> watching on the monitor. Yeah, and Stifler's mum, I think when I first saw her on um, American Pie, like I was young then. You probably didn't even know this movie, George, but it was, you know. Uh, that's a good question. Have you seen American Pie? No, I've heard many things about it. I've heard one particular scene is that there is a pie and someone does something to a pie. <laughs> is that all you know about it? Yeah. That's all I know of it, yeah, and I've never really researched it more. God damn, we're old. Okay, you need to go and watch it. I yeah. will. I'll give you a review okay. next time we catch up. Yes. Yeah, it's a classic. It's a classic kind of teenage coming of age movie. They come around every sort of decade. There's there's a new sort of version of it. What it, is the new version of it, George? I, I don't know. You know, like in fact, it, I think know, um, the pub that I go to, the pub that I go to, they they sing a song about American Pie a lot. No, so, that's a song called Bye Bye Miss American Pie. Oh, it has nothing take to do with my, movies. Take my Chevy to the levee and the levee was dry. Now, that's a song by the Eagles in the 70s. Uh, <laughs> we're not that old. What? You rude son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. That is a classic Apologies. rock song by the okay. Eagles. Hold on. What is, what is that? American Pie. So American Pie is like a symbol of wholesomeness, right? So that's. That, that, it's kind of like, you know, families and mum baking and, and a nice warm pie. So it's kind of the term American pie is a symbol for family yeah. wholesomeness, right? So, but what this kid does in this coming of age movie, so it's all about high school. It's all about, you know, your first love, having sex for the first time, um, trying to find your way in the community, you know, find your identity. And he ends up, someone says, what's it like getting to second base? And he his mate describes it as like it's like it's like warm apple pie. Putting your doodle. No, he just says it's like warm apple oh, pie. Right. I think he uses sort of like a, a finger motion, right? It's 1999. Jesus, that's why. And then <laughs> well, you, his, you weren't born. His dad I wasn't born on him. Oh my and God. he's got a, he sees a hot apple pie on the bench. He's and he's like, mm, don't worry about the tissues and the and the moisturizer. He just goes and tries and put his willy. In oh apple pie, and his dad to see if it sort of feels that's what sex might be like. And his dad walks in while he's got the pie and he's groin. Oh. 
That's one scene. <laughs> I, I would hope that that he was using protection at least. You well, it was a hot pie. He could have got third degree burns. He could have right. burnt it off. He buttered himself up. You uh, go and watch it. It's pretty funny. Yeah, there's a, there's a great breakout performance by Sean William Scott, which is which is Stifler, um, and he's he's pretty funny in it. And then he's gone on to have some you know pretty pretty good career as a result. Not many others have, I don't think. Oh, Stifler's there's- mum. Stifler's mum has. Yeah. Uh, the Jeff. girl with the red hair, you know, she's just. She was in How I Met Your Mother. She's now on a, yeah, yeah. She was. I think the curly red hair girl as well. She's just in a new show at the moment, which I can't remember. So, yeah. Mm. Anyway, that was a deep dive on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will go and watch it. What I was going to ask you is what the, the song American Pie, Bye mm. Bye American Pie, what does that mean? Grant oh, I actually God. do know, and I think it's not the Eagles; it's Don it's McLean. Don McLean. I just, I just caught myself as well and realised it's Don McLean, uh, not the Eagles. Yes, Don McLean. My apologies. Don McLean. Isn't there's he- a rumor. There's a rumor that it's about Buddy Holly, the Big Bopper, and Richie Valens, who were three big singers of that time, who all died on the same aeroplane when they went to a gig. Yeah. So there's a, a line where um, and the three men I admire the most, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They reckon it's about those three singers. Really? Uh, did you just you, did you just realize this, or are you googling it, pretending it like it's your own information? I will let you know that I actually did Buddy Holly the musical and played Richie Valens, one of the guys who died, who sings "Ba la 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 bamba, ba la la bamba." That guy, yeah. So did I've got a little do, bit of a history on it. Did you do the scene where he died in the plane? Was that part of the musical? <laughs> It actually was. It was very, very weird. We It was three of us standing centre stage and in slow motion for the people at home on YouTube, we were just standing there and all we did was put like a belt buckle on the plane and stood there and stared at the audience and then the curtains closed. Oh, that's <laughs> That's really- how the show finished and then American Pie played. Wow. Oh, that's actually like... I would have preferred like the actual you guys acting out this as it was crashing. You know what I mean? Would you have gone for the lean on the seat in front with your head on on your forearms, or would you gone like yeah, bend over with your head in your lap? Like what position would you have adopted? I think about that a lot. Which of the two positions would you adopt that they instruct in the event of a plane crash? Lean on the seat in front, or bend over and sort of wrap your legs around your arms around your legs and sort of get your head to your knees. I don't know, but can you imagine if we actually had a, an actual plane on stage in a tiny little Baptist school musical? Yeah. Oh, yeah, good point. I they was going to say, you could have through things, the roof into the stage. You could have things dropping from the roof depending on your budget, you know, like the airbags. Um, yeah, okay. Well, hold on. Going back to your thing, what would you do? If you're in a car accident, yeah. right, and you have to, like, because I've thought about this, if you're going to, have a car accident and it's going to be pretty bad. Say, for instance, someone hits you in the back and it's, you know, it feels like it's slow motion and you want to prepare your kids, you're about to hit a tree or something. How do you prepare them? Being in several car accidents, what, what, how would you Mine prepare? Were racing them? related, not like on the road. No, but I mean, you have more experience How'd than I help? do. Well, I'm, I do this to you whenever we do a sudden break. I always put my arm out and try and pin you back to your chair. Yeah, I know, but I have three children. So, like, I've said to them before, okay, guys, brace yourselves when we've like aquaplaned that time, hit a like a bit of flood water and we skidded a bit. To be honest, I think it, the more. Um, loose you are, the better you come out from an accident. Breaking yourself and going all stiff actually makes can sometimes make the injuries worse. That's why, like the seatbelt will do its job. But yeah, but I, what do you do? Do you put your arms like that on the steering wheel? Do you sit back? Like, no, don't put your face in the steering wheel because that's where the bloody airbag, airbag is, is, and it'll take your head off. Okay, yeah. Well, it'll, the people don't know this. Nobody ever prepares you for crashing in a car. So what I want to know is, say I'm... Keep them on the side of the steering wheel. There's no, that, nothing else you can do with your hands. And what about a kid who's in the front seat and they've just got the airbag? Don't, yeah, don't lean forward. Yeah. The airbag, will, the airbag will take care of them. They'll be fine. It'll be soft landing for them. A soft landing? You just said the airbag will take your head off. If you put your head on the steering wheel, <laughs> yeah. Well, because when you hit something, you you the impact makes you go forward. So... You, 
Yeah, and that's what the airbag is designed to catch you. So you just got to say, it. okay, kids, we're going to hit a tree. Just everybody smile, be happy. Be, <laughs> oh, be, come on. <laughs> be really loose because this is what happens when we try to have a serious conversation. You know, George, she takes it too far, right? I oh, give I... I give you a bit of instruction and then you go, oh, does that mean we all smile and take a photo before we hit the tree? No, I just because... noticed that, yeah. <laughs> no, because they want to, like, because I know when I said brace yourself, brace yourself. Nobody they knows all went, what that means. Well, they <laughs> did because they remembered. I don't know something you must have said to them, or you can you hold on to the door handle, I guess, or yeah. Because Sailor said to me one time, "Do I put my hands on the on the front thing and and press myself back?" And I was like, "No, I don't think that's a good idea." The airbag. I was thinking to myself, the airbag would break your arms, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like how violent is an airbag when it comes out? Well, it's a shotgun cartridge that it, that fires it, so it's it's an explode. It's an explosive. Yeah, it, right. Because it's got to it's got to it's got to inflate, you know, in a nanosecond. So at the time it takes you to hit the tree and for your head in slow motion to move forward, it has to be blown up. Mm. So it's it's an explosive charge. So it's it's pretty serious. What happens to it's all life saving as the well. plastic around it? Like, does it just open I, up? I and think it... it. I think it. I think it folds. I think it like yeah, opens up and then it shoots out. So that's why you don't want your hands anywhere near it because it'll break your thumbs. Oh, see, this is very interesting. The other mm. thing now that we're on this topic, which is so random and not where we're all going, but if you have a car accident, and I don't know why you're the expert here, but if you have a car accident, and you like. Um, crash into water. Oh, this is my nightmare. Yeah. And in your, the car is sinking. Mm. Is it true that you can't open the door until you're fully submerged because of the pressure in the cabin? No, that- it, no, it'll, you, the reason why it's hard to open the door is because there's more force on the outside of the water pushing against the car than there is on the inside, right? So you've got air on the inside of the car, water on the outside, water yeah. is a d- more dense pressure. Yeah. Right. So, you open it as quickly as you can before that pressure increases, right? So if it's only if halfway up the door, you just put it in there, you get it open straight away, right? And if yeah. you can't open the window immediately. But if you've got electric windows. But it, that, yet, that and- pressure will only become equal. So it'll only become easy to open the door once there's the equal amount of water on the inside as there is on the outside, right? Yeah. So that's the problem is if you can't open the door, once the water comes up inside to a point, you know, that's nearly – at the roof or at, at your head. That's the, a bloody scary thought. Exactly, yeah. So you have to get that door open super quick before the car goes too far under. So Otherwise, you might not be able to get it open until the car is full of water on the inside and then the pressure is the same on the inside and the outside and the door might open then. So say you're going off the edge of a bridge, which I hope nobody ever is, should you open your car door as you're going on, off? On the way, I'm sure once it hits the water, it'll slam shut. Um, this is a dilemma. This is the real dilemma for. Wind your window down that. on the way, maybe it's not a bad idea, but it'll fill. That's a good quicker. idea. It'll fill quicker. Yeah, and all the water will pour in. But cars tend to float straight away. Right. So they float instantly because it's just got water trapped, you know, under the bonnet and the boot and under the car and inside. So they float. You got uh, you have a little bit of time. Yeah. To get out, but I'd be going straight for the window. Has anyone ever done a TV show on like these kinds of scenarios and teaching you how to get out of them? Probably Mythbusters or something like that or... Because I would find that very interesting. And I've like... done an underwater escape course for helicopters. So, you know, as a, as a news journal in a TV newsroom, you fly in helicopters, you know, occasionally to go to big stories quickly. And t- to be legal, for you to be legal to fly in there, you have to do an underwater escape um, class, course where they go to like a suburban pool and they set up this big rig and you know that's held by a crane and it's like it's like the in, it's like the cockpit of a of a helicopter and they lower it in the water because what happens with the helicopter because the engine's up high <clears throat> the moment it lands in water it flips upside down so you need to learn how to get out of oh. walk out of a helicopter underwater upside down because that's the first thing a helicopter will do it rolls over <clears throat> and you're upside down so they do this they submerge you, it it rolls upside down and then you're going to find your way out. And then they do things like they blindfold you. So then you have to find your way out blindfolded in the dark. And then they'll lock an occasional door, which will replicate maybe a door that's jammed or broken that you can't get out of. And then you have to find another exit while you're blindfolded. Was that scary? It was petrifying Mm. because I'm claustrophobic and I'm also afraid of drowning. So it was, it was tough going. Would you ever consider doing that 
celebrity SAS show? Hell no, bro. Um, that's, that's that a, looks like that's the worst show on TV. Big no like. way. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Look, I'm a celebrity was like, you know, it had elements of torture to it, but it was also, it was fun and silly and you'd play crazy games and you'd hang out with one another. And, and, and it was, at least it was a family friendly show, you know, that, where your kids could sort of see you pushing the envelope, but there yeah. were periods where that were fun, right? Or rewarding. Whereas SAS is just, do I don't want to go there for three months and just be yelled out by some, you know, English bloke? Uh, and then just be brutalized on television. That doesn't sort of. I don't even like watching the show. Like when it first came out and I watched two episodes, I thought, whoa, this is so different. Intense. Wearing, really intense. And then. I, uh, but the difference wears off pretty quickly, I reckon. I just decided I didn't like it. I didn't like seeing people broken, you know, and 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 that's the kind of people that they get on that show too, people who are. I don't some know sort of, for what... after some sort of redemption. Maybe they've had a fall from grace or they've made yeah. a mistake and it's a, you know, but I'm sure there's people like Merrick Watts who did very well out of it. I know he speaks pretty f- highly of the experience and how it sort of changed him. Yeah. Um, but fuck that. No. Yeah. One person out of 50. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I saw a Rihanna oh, Crean. Yeah, Pitman Pit, Pit, was yeah, also, Pitman. yeah, she, um... she sort of did well out of it. Yeah. But people mistakenly go on these shows thinking that this will relaunch a career or create all these awesome, you know, new media opportunities for them. And and that just never happens. Mm. You know, know, people might see you slightly differently. You know, they might think they know you. Like kind of like Yana Pittman was a a great example. You know, she was a fierce competitor as a runner and Olympian, you know, and also known for being pretty fierce a person, right? I saw a strange story, the a show on her, and it was up uh, maybe around the same time as SAS or after. And she was saying that she was when she was very young, there were lots of inaccurate media reports that came out that nobody stopped, and they just perpetuated this image about her that she was troublesome. And yeah, I think I'm trying to remember it myself. It was it was kind of like the accusation that she was sort of just a, a difficult person, or yeah, a, a bit of a bully. like a real spoiled brat, and um, you know, didn't train or something to that effect. And mm. I, yeah, kudos to her because she's taken the narrative back. So um, yeah, there can be those those benefits, but man, it, it's it's like it's tough. What well, what about like, the person who hurt? It's not faked. It's it's kind of real. They really do just they want hammer to you. break you. What about the person who hurt their back oh, and can't yeah. competitively dive anymore? No. Oh yeah, there's that and the big wave surfer. Oh no, that was that was Survivor. Um. Yeah. Like that's you know, but to be fair, network TV. Wow. What wouldn't you do, George? If you got like a, if you see any of those, you go, I do that one and not that one. Oh, I reckon I'd sit on the couch and be like, yeah, I can easily do that and then get there in the moment and have a (laughs) full-blown mental breakdown. I reckon it'd be horrendous. Um, I I struggle in the, the, you know, smallest of situations in in just in everyday life. So I don't know. I'm a celeb look pretty cool. I guess I need to become a celebrity before I do that. (laughs) Um, you man. You got a radio award behind you, best newcomer. I can see. That's all you need. That's all you need. A radio award to go on to I'm a Celebrity. Get me out of here. You're on Australia's 457th most popular podcast. Uh, <laughs> you are you are making headlines left, right, and center. It's that's is, right. You are gold for that show. You're destined for it. What well, about like things that you can't do? What about things like snakes or eating, you know, gross stuff? I, I really like snakes. Um, I'm fine with all that. Yeah, I reckon the the claustrophobia thing. I reckon that'd be okay too. Mate, I'm not um, talking about Alan's lolly snakes. I'm not talking about red or oh, green ones. I'm I'm, I'm actual snakes that snake. can bite you. The physical thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd struggle a little bit. Okay. But fruit, like eating fruit in itself, is just a, a, a terrible fear for me, which we've spoken about. <laughs> I'm dead serious too. Like I, I haven't like touched tonight's it. meal is a banana. George would be like, oh. yeah, yeah. I'd be gone. I'd leave. <laughs> Get me out of here. George, jump in a pool full of mangoes and survive <laughs> tonight on I'm a Celebrity. That's actually quite funny. Would you eat crocodile? Would I have. I have had crocodile before. Have you? 
it right. tastes well. I had it with like the world's hottest chili, though, so I didn't really taste much of it. I had more of the heat. <laughs> yeah, so it just tasted like yeah, it was pretty bland. The, the chili yeah. overtook it. It's just a mix between fish and chicken almost, and it's all we had to eat our our, our crocodile off off its actual crocodile foot, like it was a foot with all its nails on it, and we had to sort of just eat the flesh. Imagine if they start serving that up at like I don't know they wouldn't do it at Red Rooster because it's chicken, but like you just get your box and you've got a crocodile foot there all fried ready to go. Well, I was quite resourceful in the jungle because you don't have much, can't take anything in. So then I used the foot as a comb, so I could have like a <laughs> I used, so I'd use his nails to sort of you know so comb my hair, so I keep the volume. Oh man, it was an entire foot. Yeah, it was that's a foot, I'm... and we just sort of ate the kind of you know the forearm off the leg. And you can only cook it by what. Like boiled? frying it or we boiling it. it. We boiled it and fried fried I mean, other things. Boiled chicken is gross. Like mate, it was yeah, it's it was a bit hectic. But I'm but still like, here. Oh, but like that's yeah. How would you go with a crocodile for how would you go with a pig's anus? I actually saw a TikTok the other day of a raw <laughs> anus. Just an anus by itself, nothing around it, no, no organs, anything. And it was like it was like a like a replica. It wasn't an actual thing, but it was just sitting what? there. And I'm like, an animal yeah, yeah. or a human anus? Human, yeah. yeah. Like, what what are replica? you looking at? Are you- what sick oh, shops are you visiting? No, you no I'm on Doc Talk, Doctor Talk. You know, right. what's Doctor Talk? Okay. Doctor so, TikTok. So okay. they're like very educational. And, and they, what was the purpose of showing you a replica anus? Yeah. It was just a five-second video saying this is the anus, and then you, that was that. I kept on scrolling. <laughs> that doesn't sound very doctory. <laughs> this is an anus. <laughs> With no other information that sort of qualifies how the human body works, what you should or shouldn't do with the anus, just here is an anus. I can picture Thanks for watching. face. You'd be like... Yeah, I was quite taken back, and I'm like, I don't want to go anywhere near an anus again. And I have one. Like, this is terrible. Let's get a mirror out and buddy, squat over the mirror and have a good look. Oh, oh, I, hope this isn't, I hope this isn't TMI. I, th- I think every bloke has done that, and it's not a really nice thing to do. Why do you do? Why do you do that? I don't know if I've done it, George. What do you mean? You've done oh, it? what? No, I hope I'm. I really hope I'm not the only one here. What the flame <laughs> Hang on a second. It was your suggestion. So what? <laughs> what mirror did you use? Did you use my hair mirror? I uh, mirror. I I uh, use the mirror that you um you pretend kissing on. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm joking. Oh. I used my phone camera. What? Wow. Well, Last time I borrowed your phone. Oh, what? Why? I didn't. Ta- no, I didn't take a photo. I just had a look because you know sometimes you just need to make sure things are I okay. Didn't accidentally took a photo, and then you're connected <laughs> to your family's iCloud. Oh, that would be horrendous. That would be <laughs> so terrible. You've got family sharing with your phone on, and then all of a sudden it just pops up on everyone's devices in, in their photo library. <laughs> Can I? Just what ask- would you say it is? Like, oh, it's just the jungle I went to visit. <laughs> Well, it's I guess it depends. A, it's a what it close looks up like. of me, mate, winking at me. Can I just ask, firstly, what, why, why, why have a look at it? See what it looks like. You know, I think we should all be body curious. I think, you know, I don't think you should, I don't think there should be any part of your body that you should be ashamed of. Or, but you, you said know. squat over a mirror. Well, so how else would you do it? I don't know. If you got a long mirror, just open your butt cheeks. Like, <laughs> oh, I see. It. Yeah. Mate, can you turn around though and see it clearly? Yes. How do you look at something on your back? I don't know. I don't think I've ever looked at my back. Oh, well, your back. No, I could turn around in a mirror and see my back, but you'd have to arch it a little bit, I think. But, and can I just ask, were you you were unhappy so, with what you saw? Tomorrow saw, on TikTok, just... she's like, show us how to see your butt crack. <laughs> no, I think, like, guys, people can can check for medical things happening yeah. down oh, that way, you know, oh. like whether there's, you know, not not saying that I, I do, but, you know, hemorrhoids are a thing and, and, and stuff um, like that. So condition. You yeah. Know? I, Got to be delicate. Tried to look. Remember, I was trying to look at what was going on downstairs when I was pregnant with um with Scout with that big 
varicose veins oh, and Jesus. I couldn't look any the my belly was too big. Hi. Yeah. Yep. Granted to look for me. Yeah. Which right. we have spoken about and it's very unpleasant. But no, it wasn't unpleasant. It was just a, it's a, the body doing what the body does, you know, in the act of not your reaction raising at humans. the time. No, no, I reaction. reacted I reacted perfectly fine. You went, oh my God. <laughs> I did not <laughs> do that. <laughs> like, I was not a, an alarmist at all. Your mouth was open so wide a bit of drool fell out. Well, I I was shocked at what I was seeing. I hadn't seen that before. And but I was wanting reassurance that it was okay. And I was like, not. everything's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. You said call the doctor straight away. Um anyway, we don't need to go back over old ground. Um should we start the show, guys? Yeah, oh we should. Oh yeah. Yeah. So how was your break before we start the show? <laughs> Oh my god! Did you have a good uh, a good little off season, mate? I had a really good off season. I had four weeks off work, work, and then about three weeks off podcast work with you guys. Got to catch up briefly and check out the new digs. Things are going good that way, and yeah, it was just good. I feel refreshed. I feel I feel really good. It was the first New Year that I ever had where I didn't go out and party. I actually just stayed at home. I got the notepad out. I put on some music, watched a bit of Doc Talk, and um, actually wrote down some goals on things that I want to achieve this year, which I've never, ever done. I've been a little bit like, oh, goals are a bit gimmicky and, and whatnot. But uh, this year, I'm feeling like it's a good one, guys. And what was your first goal? Number one, uh, take a photo of anus. <laughs> Number two. How did you know? Post to Doc anus. Talk for feedback. <laughs> No. Yeah, I, I had some pretty like solid like five goals. One was like separate work and life. Well, the other one was get back to ninety kilos. Talk, uh, talk us through each one and why. Okay, well, uh, work and life. Oh, I've got it right here. Let's read it. Uh, anything that is work or uh, work related is only allowed to occur within the hours I'm being paid. <laughs> Uh, outside of work hours, do not check work emails or communicate with colleagues unless it's super important. So just making sure there's no zip, no crossover and it doesn't get you know mixed up and is your that, life becomes work. Okay, so is that is that just because I know this is a this is very much a young person's movement at the moment, which is setting boundaries. Is that to ensure that employers aren't taking unnecessary advantage of you when the clock's off and you should be resting, or is it just for yourself to say, hey man? Look, I don't need to look at that stuff tonight. Let's keep my head, you know, clear for for, for friends and family and and downtime. What? Why? I, I think it's a bit of both, to be completely honest. Um, you know, if you keep on giving and giving and giving and, and doing a lot of extra stuff outside of those work hours, they're going to expect that in the future. And it's not sustainable. I can't keep on, you know, doing all of the as much as it it makes the the output of work um, maybe better. Um, it just it gets a bit exhausting, as I'm sure both of you would know. So that was a big goal. The other one was get back to 90 kilos. So continue the gym, bit of running, uh, a few financial goals too. And I've got a list of 25 things to do before I turn 25, Wow! which, which I have um, not started. So that's great. Oh, but I sent you one. Well, yeah, I need to actually start writing things onto the list. Oh. So if you are listening, slide into the DMs. Let me know what I need to do before I'm 25 and we'll we'll tick them all off the uh, the bucket list. Well, it's 24 now because he has to take a photo of his anus. Oh, that's- but what <laughs> would Can you I be just- prepared to go through some of those or are they private? George, yes. did you get my bucket list? Yeah, it was a place to go and see over in New Zealand, I believe. Is that correct? No. Okay, it- no. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't open it. It was in like Switzerland. It was like this unknown place. Same thing. Yeah, it's like- a country. <laughs> it's a place. I just I saw it and it popped up and I thought, wow, that looks incredible. It's like an unknown place and it says before you die, you really should go and see this place. It's like a hidden away little oasis. It Can actually looked like to me. Why can't we go there? Well, I'd love How about to. we take the podcast on the road to this yeah. little oh, joint? That'd be awesome. We go on top of a mountain in Switzerland. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to the podcast, yeah. We probably get better service there than we well, would the, here. The Wi Fi is going very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So but- that was my new year, and it's a good year so far. All is. All is going well. How about you guys? Did you have a nice break? It was hectic by the sounds of things. It was good. We did um, Christmas at our place for the first time. 
normally we sort of freeload off other family members who who put on a wonderful day, whether it's my family or Shezzy's family. Um, but we were the central family this time and everyone came to us, which was which, like it's a big day. There's a lot on. Um, but it was nice. It was nice to sort of take the reins off, you know, off our, our five parents and, and, and run it ourselves. So, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I liked it. And we did the same thing for New Year's. Yep. 30 people for um, Christmas Day. I cooked three porks and we had a lot of food. We had a lot of food. And I prepared the entire day before and I have never stood in the same spot is what I've realised for 12 hours because I had the sorest hips. (laughs) I don't know how chefs do it when they stand there and just prep. Like maybe I wasn't standing in proper shoes or something. Even hairdressers, no, just anyone just, on a hard floor. It was like I could barely walk. I was walking like really, yeah, stilted. Um, and but it was good. It was really nice, and we enjoyed it. And Scout, um, she had been asking us for a chihuahua, as you you remember, because we yeah spoken about it with you, um. Yeah, for about six months, oh, probably longer actually, about eight months, she kept saying, I really want a chihuahua. And we didn't know where it came from and we kind of just dismissed it a bit. She wrote a couple of Christmas lists mm. before Christmas because um, the girls like to write Christmas lists. And I like sailors because it's like she lists three things that are, you know, somewhat achievable for Santa to um, to provide and then the rest is like ev- anything uh anything 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 like, she <laughs> like just writes anything for the rest of it but scouts was very specific she wrote number one chihuahua puppy number two was a circus swing <laughs> number three was a circus tent mm. um I can't remember what else she wrote, but um, oh, but, lofty dreams. Yeah, and the day before Christmas or Christmas Eve, um, you know, she kept talking about, and and she was very confident about um, Santa bringing a Chihuahua puppy, um, which you know we Grant and I had acknowledged that we didn't need another puppy. No, animals tend to make our lives. <laughs> Significantly harder. Uh, mm, okay. We haven't had a great run. They also keep dying on us, uh, which what? is a little bit hard, whether they die from natural causes or falling off the second story of our guinea pig hutch. Um, well, that, yeah, that. You know what? I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of not up for more trauma, to be honest. So the idea of introducing yet another animal to the family was I was a little, you know, unsure if that was the right thing to do. Yeah. But, you know, such is the bright eyes of a, of a, of a little seven-year-old, you know, whose heart is set on something. And we know. don't even know where it came from. It was so specific. And she also gave us a description of what the chihuahua puppy she wanted it to look like. She had, you know, it had to have pretty black ears and... You know, Santa had a... So Santa had to, yeah, get very specific and and, and make that exact dog. Well, even he wasn't so sure, right? Exactly. So so Santa, you know, he delivered a present on the day, which Mm. was a toy chihuahua, right? And with an accompanying note saying, um, Dear Scout, you know, I, I really... Uh, appreciate and understand the fact that you you very much would like a new um, a new puppy. However, it's a big responsibility, and puppies are for life, not just for a present, just for a short time. Uh, it's a big commitment, and I need to know if you're up for it first. So look after this puppy as best you can, and if I can see that you're doing a wonderful job and you're very capable of looking after this puppy, then perhaps maybe I can bring you a real one. Mm. And I'm pretty sure that puppy, as I walked in, all the stuffing was pulled out of it. <laughs> Yeah, um, she loved it to death. She like, squeezed it within an inch of its life. She fed it sushi. Yeah, she took it out for walks. She gave it water. Like we were two weeks after Christmas, and Grant and I were like, we, we have a real problem here because Santa is watching, and Santa is thinking. Holy hell, she is serious about wanting a chihuahua puppy. Yeah, the, uh, the the novelty hadn't worn off at all. She was she was becoming the a parent of this of this puppy and determined to show Santa that she was worthy of a real one. Yeah, even like one time we had to turn around and drive all the way back home because she forgot the puppy to take mm. it to the movies. She and... didn't want it to be crying in the house without oh. her. So she took Bubbles, which was its name, everywhere. 
and she kept preparing for the day that Santa would give her the puppy and spoke about it all the time and and yeah this one day we were getting ready to go somewhere and she came into the room and she said mom oh my gosh and she was trembling and she said I can hear a puppy barking in my room Santa's replaced the the toy with a puppy and she had tears in her eyes and and I was thinking how did Santa replace the toy you know with a real puppy like Mm. I was thinking that's just impossible because you know how does we know he's magical and very (laughs) special but we we weren't quite sure how this was happening. Yeah, so I had to walk her into her room to have a look and she was shaking and she's going, I just know it, I just know it, I just know it. And we looked everywhere and her, the heartbreak on her little face mm. was unbearable. It was... Um, I think she'd heard a neighbour's dog. Oh, I don't know what oh, she heard. Oh, right. And she'd sort of just drawn her own conclusions that, you know, maybe now was the time and it had finally arrived. So that was that was heartbreaking. It was really tough. So then we had to console her and she's like, when is he going to, you know, replace the puppy? Um, but she proved herself. She did. And, um, yeah, he delivered. So then, you know, she woke up one morning and she got a letter from Santa on her floor. And it said that Santa had found a puppy that he thought, a little female puppy, Chihuahua, um, Chihuahua Cross, Mini Foxy, um, that he had found that he thought was perfect for her and that um, she and mum had to drive for nine hours mm. Uh, mm. straight and Good on you, Santa. stay overnight <laughs> yep. in a hotel. <laughs> Uh, which was a little bit, you know, interesting. Fuel must be expensive for Santa at the moment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. So yep. he made you guys go up. Yep. But lucky um, Santa, he can claim that back on tax because <laughs> that's his job, right? So, yeah. whew, lucky for Santa. Yeah, but we can't. No, no we can't. No, Because no, that's not our job. That's not our job. That's not what we do. So she came in and she shared this note with us when she was, uh, she kept saying, Ha ha, Dad! You can't say anything because Santa's got me a puppy, and and she was that excited, and she packed a bag real quick, and we got into the car, and now, you know, nine hours is a it's a decent trip, mm. but with a seven year old who usually every half an hour says, "Can I go to the toilet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? How far mm. off are we?" Um, it sounded like a nightmare. Um. And she was fantastic. You know what wow. would have probably saved so us all this trouble, though, is if Santa hadn't had a bottle and a half of red wine <laughs> on Christmas Eve and decided sure. that that letter was a good idea. Um, do you know what I mean? Santa um. probably could have played it pretty differently um, mm. in hindsight. But I, I think, think the red wine was running through his pen as he was well, writing I, that letter. Do you know what I think? Santa <laughs> probably has thought about that a mm. lot. Mm. Um, mm. Because Santa shouldn't write drunk. You know what? I'm putting it. I'm putting it out there now. Santa, stop <laughs> writing letters drunk because it causes at, people a lot of difficulty. At midnight. On, I wonder if um, Santa Christmas can Eve. claim that bottle of red wine on tax as well. He probably could. Yeah, because he's doing. He's in the act of performing the job. Yes, that is true. Don't Good on write you. drunk, Santa. <laughs> so Santa has um, has gifted Scout with a beautiful little um, Chihuahua cross puppy yep. that Scout holds like a baby. It's actually pretty bloody cute. It is honestly the sweetest thing. They follow each other everywhere. They're best buddies. It's like, uh, yeah, it. It was mm. actually really heartwarming. On the night that we stayed, like Scout and I stayed up in Coffs Harbour, she said to me, Mum, I've never felt so special in all my oh, life. Yeah. She, she gets lost a little bit in the shadow of her louder sister, louder older sister. And also with um, Sunday, you know, being quite demanding because she's in the brace and, yeah, and she said, she actually said to me. If you knew the me, podcast, she has hip dysplasia. She has a little brace yeah. on. Um, Scout said to me, it's like a memory from the movie Inside Out. It's a core memory. She goes, I'll never forget this. And I was like, ah. Yeah, because, yeah, like, we all we all saw that a chihuahua entered the Denya household, but but hearing 
uh, the story of of Santa, um, you know, getting this this puppy to her. Yeah, I, I think that is one of the greatest Santa um, acts I've ever heard of. He's a good guy. Yeah, it's a, it's actually a very sensible play by Santa. Um, even with his red wine, even, of... even though his red wine stained <laughs> teeth uh, wrote that bloody thing. <laughs> And some of it was pretty smudged by the end of the letter, i got to say. Yeah, there's a fair bit of ink. It, was a fair it actually thing. sounds like it was bad Santa who did all this. <laughs> it was a really, it was such a big moment. And, um, yeah. And, and Except there's the only issue, because everything's really, you know, great. You know, Scouty's happy and the puppy's happy and she's settling right in. But poor old Sunday, who's stuck on the floor because she can't walk. She can't, well, she can walk. But she can she's, walk a little bit. Yeah. Is getting attacked by this little puppy who just runs from the other end of the house flat out and then just jumps on her head. Yeah, and she's teething. <laughs> so Minnie Mouse is what she is what Scout called the puppy. Although pup, the puppy had like three or four names on the trip on the way back, but she settled on Minnie Mouse and Minnie, for short. She's fourteen weeks now, fifteen weeks, and teething. So she's biting everything. She's biting like furniture. <laughs> she's biting our toes when we walk past. So you have a new baby in the household. We have a new yeah. baby. We're back to the pooing so, and peeing yeah. stage. <laughs> yeah, everywhere you go, you got to watch out for the little landmines. Oh, we've got. We walk around in bare feet all the time. It's a hazardous occupation. Oh, we've got puppy pads out, and you know, you know, but she's the sweetest little dog, and I think that you know they will continue to be the best of friends. Um, yeah, that but- brings so much joy to a family too. I've got a little toy cavoodle, Theodore. Well, well, I did. He's now under the care of my parents and just the greatest thing ever um, for the family. Brings us all together, makes yeah. us laugh, makes us happy. Um, they're beautiful. So it's, yeah. it's pretty special. Yeah. I mean, it's- I, yeah, it has turned out to be a pretty magical experience for everybody and the two puppies are getting along really well. And yay. yay. Thank goodness. Yeah. Speaking oh, of magical. Yep. The racing over the weekend, mm. GD. Yes. Oh, yep. A little bit of Bathurst 12-hour action, uh, which was nice. To good to be back. back. Yeah, good to be back driving uh, for Lamborghini. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, it didn't quite end that well. I love this race. Like, I love driving around Mount Panorama, as you all probably know. Um, and then to do it in something as fast and exotic as, as that was a very lucky privilege. Um, but it, uh, we ended a bit early uh, the car. Uh, one of the drivers had a, had a had a bit of a bit of a brush with the wall, and um, we mechanically couldn't continue because the car was a bit too broken. So we withdrew, which happens around this joint. Lots of cars had big crashes um, around this place. It's such a hectic mountain, so high speed and so many walls. So it was uh, I'm I'm glad it wasn't me, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, mm. it's not something you want on your head. Um, but you no, know, you don't want a big repair bill because no. how much is it for the car well, it's someone else's car um i'd never be able to afford that obviously but um you don't want to wreck someone else's car no so um, something was- that i found really cool was uh a video of all of the school kids coming up to get signatures off you too yeah. that was really awesome just all <laughs> the adoring fans at mount panorama <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, you know. I remember being a kid uh, myself, um, hunting for autographs. Oh, um, you were a kid! Yeah, wow. I was a kid once. Um, it was a while <laughs> no ago. way! Yeah, I was also an American American Pie, and uh, <laughs> I put that pie on my genitals, and it no. Um, <laughs> No, I remember being I remember being a little kid around pit lane, um, and then hunting for autographs. Too shy to ask, too small to kind of really be seen, and you know, I remember being sort of just ignored by. I've said this before, ignored by a, a lot of famous drivers, and so it's kind of I feel like, you know. I, I kind of see me and those kids as they go past. So, yeah, I'm happy to take a photo and have a yarn and have a joke or show the odd kid through the car or the garage or, you know, try and make their day because I know that when someone finally did that to me as a youngster, it really, you know, it it, it kind of put me on the path to do what I'm doing now. So, yeah, it's nice to sort of it's nice to sort of give it back. Well, what, you had um like a really famous, um, is he a motorbike? Rider Valentino Rossi. Oh yeah, we had Valentino Rossi there. So he's like a nine-time world super uh, Mo- MotoGP champ champion, um, and one of the one of motorsports probably most colourful characters in a sense that his victory celebrations would become legendary, and they're always on the news because he's always doing something crazy after winning a MotoGP race. Um, 
Um, and so he came out. He's he's now retired from MotoGP racing, but he's now doing car racing. So he was he, so many people were out to sort of come and, and watch him. The, the line was it was the, enormous. The line they wow. were waiting for two and a half hours to get an autograph from him. How long was he signing autographs for? Is I what don't I'm know. Wondering. He just that... wanted to come over and just be a race car driver. He didn't want to sort of do the big, I'm a sort of a celebrity bloke. And I'm, and I'm aware that most people wouldn't know who Valentino Rossi is probably on this podcast. Um, but, yeah, he's a massive deal worldwide and um, everyone just loves him because he's just so cheeky and naughty and funny. And, um, yeah, it was – Is he Italian? Yeah, he's Italian, yeah. Yeah, right. So how did that feel to be on track with him? Did you like see him at all? Did you pass his car? All the other drivers were just so excited to have him there. We're all nervous. So we went to the driver's briefing. Like we're all too afraid to ask for a photo because we thought that might be a bit embarrassing coming from us. <laughs> um, but when we all have to go to a driver's briefing, but, you know, ahead of the race weekend where they sort of tell you all the rules for the event and like every single race driver, no matter how famous, like Craig Lowndes, like everyone was like, Valentino, can we have an order? Can we an autograph and a photo please and he was really obliging but everyone we'd all turn into like little little racing nerds where we'd sort of seen our hero and yeah it was yeah it was kind of you know he's, he had a big presence yeah and because we we all respect his achievements you know a nine-time world champion that's never been done before so he's how do you go up, from a motorbike there. into a car and race that well, it's the same principles, really. It's just all motion, you know. It's all it's all grip versus the surface. You know, they have two tyres. We've got four. You're still trying to manipulate a machine around the corner faster than everyone else. The basics are still the same. But could you get on a motorbike and go and race around Mount Panorama? No, it's easier to go from a bike to a car than uh, a car to a bike. Yeah, right. You raced with, um. who was that other famous person in Germany? Mm. Oh, I was going to say Pac. Patrick Dempsey, but that wasn't him. He's massively you? involved in motorsport. You know the guy from Sweet Home Alabama. Oh no, it's going to be another movie. Before sure, it wasn't time. Patrick Dempsey. No. Which guy um, are you thinking of? Maybe he had the famous wife, Judd. Oh, Dario Franchitti. Yeah. So yeah, he's married to Ashley Judd, the actress. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he, he was in the garage next to us in Germany. Remember? That was his brother. Oh right. Dario Franchitti. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Who did I say? Um, Ashley Judd is married to Dario Franchitti's brother. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Um, Which is a terrible No, no. Story. So Dario was the guy. His brother was f- like far, far, not Fabio, far. Yeah, it was his brother anyway. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Not a good point to raise, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the that eating a German sausage and someone saying that person in there is blah, 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 and obviously I didn't listen properly. Yeah, um, yeah. I just heard Ashley Judd and you know, nearly so, fell over myself. <laughs> he's in a – yeah, Dario is an IndyCar champion and, uh, yeah, that was his brother's far, far – I can't remember his name. Flavio. But we you, did eat a lot of um, – German sausage. Yeah. And a lot you, of sausage. I was just going to say – Big sausage fan she is. Do you know – do you remember – Loves do you, it. Do you remember when we were sitting having lunch? What do they call in, them in in Germany? What's the German sausage Kransky? called? Kransky. Kransky, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember we were sitting down having lunch in Melbourne and Hugh Jackman walked in with his wife and yes. they were sitting next to us, remember? Yep. And it was real awkward because we just kept like half looking over and – yeah, yeah. Right. we were. Right. <laughs> they were literally. We were they almost were like, elbow tip yeah, to they elbow were so tip. So close. So we had our oh, own wow. like two, two, two like person table, and theirs was, and I was on a bench seat, and they they had a two person table, and he and we, he was sharing the same bench seat, and the girls had their own chairs, and we were having a private meeting, like you we know, were with someone. Li- yeah, and we we're like we're elbow tip to elbow tip. I don't know what to do. It was really <laughs> awkward because you don't know, like, yeah. like, do you look? I don't at them interrupt and- them because it was like a date night for them. And, and we what could- does Hugh Jackman look like? Just having a meal in his own time. Is he just as majestic as we see him on screen? He is majestic as. And that, and this is what this is what happened. We were overwhelmed by the majesticness that we just weirded out. Yeah. Like we were like we forgot how to use knives and forks, <laughs> <laughs> and we we like we're just knocking things over on our table. We were so nervous, and, and we're like, so... "Oh my god, am I supposed to say something? He's not going to know who the hell I am, but I really want to say hello." And we stopped talking, and then we realised that it looked like we were listening to them. Yes, and then it was like really oh, we couldn't hold a conversation together because we were so distracted by the fact that he was next to us with with Deb. 
Deborah and And he was so nice to the staff and the staff came up and they're like, Can we get a photo with you? And he's like, Yeah, sure, no worry. Like really generous <sighs> and it was just and we did nothing. We didn't say hello. <laughs> we <laughs> were sitting there with your maracas trying to do a show for him, bit of Peter Allen gear. Let's just really get, let's get the salt and pepper out and just go, Out the Copa, Copa Cabana. Yeah, it was really I still cool, Australia. Oh um, really awkward. Um yeah, and the other time, it's so weird that I remember this. Do you remember Teo from Play School was yeah. sitting was anything in opposite? This yesterday? Yeah, because I yeah, and he was sitting opposite us at the David Jones food court or something, and I was about to go in and have surgery, and we were having a steak, and and I don't know what, but he had the biggest guns. Remember in his little yeah, t-shirt? He was really jacked. Yeah, he's like real like. Muscly, and we, well, we sort of gave him unexpected. a nod from over the room. We go, like, Hey, Teo from Play School, and he's yeah. like, Hey, old weather guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that Lego building, though, that he did on Play School, you know, oh, really yes. those blocks in and just flexing those oh. guns. But it's so, it's like, it's yeah, you know what I wanted to do with Hugh Jackman is when what? our bill arrived, right, and they put it on the table, I wanted to, like, knock it off the table accidentally, just subtly, so it fell between me and Hugh. And so when he goes, like, because he's so polite, right, he goes, oh, let me get that, and he leans down and grabs that. And I go, oh, let you get that? Oh, sure, not a worry. No, Yeah, you can pay for it. How oh, kind. Thank you so much. It's so lovely of you. I would have <laughs> literally died if you did that. <laughs> you should have started, like, reading out the gets- weather and's like, Oh, that weather forecast sounds pretty familiar. I know that voice from like the Australian Sunrise Show. Oh, it's bloody the weatherman. Oh, it's the bloody weatherman. Imagine I started just reading items off the menu. Like, oh my oh, god, uh, I would have lamb shank stabbed uh, you. Twenty three in and sunshine with a light, slight chance of rain in the afternoon. Uh, <laughs> I would have stabbed you. Brought to you by Beacon fork. Lighting. Let's see if he oh, just... Beacon Lighting. Oh my oh, god, god. And that was the sponsor. How do you know that, that? Yeah, every single time. And like Inner Health Plus at one point too. We're just giving free plugs now, aren't we? It really was. Oh, oh my God. God. That memory? is so weird. Yeah, because I had to do like some of the voiceover ads. That was so How did it go again? We know. Everybody knows. Go do it. No. Do it for me. No. Yep. Could have done it on the day. So Hugh was like, would have just gone, oh, is that the... Uh, I don't... I'm yeah. sure he doesn't Do you reckon he knew, but he was like, I don't know, I just want to have dinner. I can't be... <laughs> You know, stuff chatting to those bloody well, C we grade were, celebs. We, I don't think he thinks like that. I think he was genuinely into his wife. Yeah, he was genuinely enjoying her conversation. Not and that we she, were listening. Uh, no, Not that we were listening to their conversation. <laughs> no, but it, what was really nice was that he had this smitten look, like he just watched her, and I was like, "That's amazing." You know, whereas Grant and I were watching him watch <laughs> watch her. No, our faces were looking at each other, but our eyes were to the side, like this, yeah, like pretending we were, and we sort of just nodded each other, like we were pretending to have a conversation, which is actually really embarrassing. Oh now I think about it, we, like, we, we were just we goofed that up so badly, we couldn't have handled it any worse. I know. I think now we need to reach out to Hugh and get him on and the apologize. podcast and apologize for being douchebags, <sighs> man. Yeah, I think you both look like Hugh and Deborah. To be completely, have you ever got that from people? <laughs> no, oh, I'm being serious. Like in person, no, but on the screen, you know what? I'll take that. I'll take it. Yeah, he's got a bit of a similar hairdo, and oh, Deborah's got we, blonde hair. Yeah, yeah. And, and Deborah's a beautiful lady. So I'll he's take that. He's got a rig. Too. You know, she's got a big heart because you know she does an incredible amount of charity. I've got a big heart. Are you bagging out my heart? No. no, no. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's why yeah, there's a likeness. Leave my heart alone, thanks. Uh, you're not happy with my shaving you know skills? What I, you know what I realised that night? We do not go out enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we live on a farm. We're isolated from civilization. We have three children. It's impossible to go, ever go out. Yeah. And we completely just weirded ourselves out. No doubt weirded him out. And I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed we just didn't carry on with our lives and just have a great meal. But I guess that's the star power of someone that big. And we were literally elbow tip to elbow tip. And the funny thing is that we've been somewhere before and and remember someone was filming someone was filming Grant eat because they were obviously a big fan, but they were a bit nervous and and when we realized that, then there's also an awkward dance because then we were like, oh, do we, you know, say, hey, I know that you're filming. Do you want like a photo or something? Can and I help you so you don't have to film secretly? Yeah, because um, you could tell that they felt really awkward and then we felt awkward and then we weren't talking properly. And so that's probably what 
happened with Hugh. I totally get it, yeah. But on a much bigger scale because – well, maybe he's so used to it, he just it, he just blocks it out. Yeah, maybe we're overplaying our significance here in his life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many years ago did this happen? Oh, two, three. Oh, okay. Oh, we didn't, we didn't even, oh maybe well, two. Well, because COVID, we haven't really travelled anywhere. Yeah, it was, yeah. And it was a defense, like, we know, yeah, it was, yeah, God, I'm still embarrassed. I'm still embarrassed. <laughs> Oh, my God. I don't you? know what else I would have done differently. I know plenty of people who would have gone, you, oh, it's uh, I'm a newsreader or I'm a, you know, I'm from a, a, a variety show or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But I, I'm just not, I never assume someone knows who you are, for starters. You no. know what I mean? I, I've never been anyone who's ever used my own name, right, for anything. In fact. People ask me to do it. My mates ask me to do it. Strangers go, why don't you just go and say your bloody grand, didn't you? Because it never works for starters. And the only time you ever use it, that person will go, no, I have no idea who you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you never do it again. What about that really drunk person at Hamilton Island who came up and they're like, oh, yeah, Carl, Carl Denya. Remember? <laughs> Grant Stefanovic or something. Remember? They were like, I, know, I know who you are. Yeah, no, there were two people. One was we were walking along at Hamilton Island. And he goes, ah, ah. And I'm like, okay, here we go. He's like, ah, oh, mate. Oh, uh, yep, uh, uh, buddy, I know who I'm looking at here. That's right. Carl Stefanovic from the Today Show. You can't fool me, Carl. <laughs> he goes, I know you got a hat on. And I'm like, yep, you got me. I'm, I'm Carl. <laughs> Just- <laughs> it was like, and he wouldn't let him go. It was this big song and dance. We were there. There was a whole group of us. And someone else called me something other completely different name. Grant Daniels. Grant Daniels. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Greg, Greg, Greg Daniels, Greg Daniels, Daniels. Yeah, that's what it was. Greg, Greg Daniels. Someone's, someone's going, ah, oh, that's a bloody, it's that bloke from bloody Sunrise, that Greg Daniels. Greg Daniels. And then everyone, everyone who I was with, so my family, my sister's family and another yeah. family. So everyone just called me Greg Daniels for the next <laughs> bloody was three hilarious years. He... Three years of Greg Daniels Christmases <laughs> is, is what I've had. Uh, I still call it, I still call him that sometimes. When I'm in trouble, I get Greg Daniels from yeah. Shizzy. I like Greg it. Greg Daniels. Mm. Yeah, pretty funny. Oh, mate, nice. good to be back though, isn't it? It's is good to be back. We've got it's a nice. cracking season. If we can make our podcast equipment last <laughs> the whole season. I was just going to say, as a bit of a tease for what to expect this season, we're introducing a few benchmarks to the program. It's unbelievable. We'll, we'll make a return. Yes, um, I love that segment. We just... We've got a game called It's All True or Is It? Ooh, it's All Cooked. <laughs> and That's journos want to be rap stars. Journos want to be rap stars. So stay tuned. Those games will pop up in the near future. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about with the journos want to be rap stars. This is mm. good. I like where this is going. And next week we have a special guest. Hugh Jackman comes on, so we can apologise <laughs> to him for being absolute dickheads at the table next to him <laughs> and ruining their night out. Imagine if he said, "Don't even remember." No, that would crush me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. Thanks for listening. Great to see your lovely face again. Uh, Giorgio Armani the third. That Mustaka is looking wonderful. Yeah. And love, Thank you. love your work. Yep. And go Greg watch- Daniels <laughs> and Deborah. Lovely hanging. Go watch American Pie, George, <laughs> yeah. and report back to us. Don't yeah. end up in hospital with third degree burns <laughs> on your groin. Please. No, don't do it. Love you. I will try not to. Bye. Okay. Bye. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shezzy Denya. Bye.